What's up, guys? Coming to you, uh, trying to show a couple of clips from last Saturday's comeback win over Wake Forest. A uh, couple of things that really stood out with Carolina's ability to get going was the RPO game was sensational. Um, but Carolina did find something on what we call the cross country route uh, twice in this ball game to, to uh, two different receivers for large gains. And a lot of it went into pre-snap game planning of understanding how Wake Forest would react to motions uh, due to the shadows in Keenan Stadium and the glare on my board. It's not gonna be quite as good of a view, but I thought the telestration and the ability, they actually gave us a coach's copy on, on this particular place. So you can see how it develops. Um, so I'm gonna try and kind of draw out some things as we go into the, go through with the marker. So originally Wake Forest is in kind of a hybrid, what looks like a combo coverage, but Carolina starts with formation to the boundary, meaning the ball's on the hash. They're gonna set the passing strength of their formation with two receivers down to the side. So what that forces Wake to do is if they're a true quarters football team, they want to end up putting two guys over the top of them with an apex player over the top of that. So Wake is playing that with a basically 5-2 look, an old school under front up top. But Carolina had some type of idea that when they sent Daz Newsome in motion to get an extra hat to this alley strong for the swing passes, or the glance routes or everything that Wake would rotate into what you call a cover three defense, which means that if you divide this field into thirds, that Wake would rotate, Wake would rotate one of these safeties down. They would rotate the other safety to the deep middle of the field and these two corners would be responsible for their deep third of the field up here. So they knew on motion that they would get this look. So as you see, when Daz goes in motion here, Wake is rotating their safeties down. So Carolina's getting absolutely the look that they want. And what now is going to happen is they want to occupy the deep post route what Carolina is now doing is they're creating a basic high low on the guy who becomes the deep post defender. Okay, this safety rotating to the middle of the field. And as he rotates to the field, he sees the ball off the line on play action pass. Carolina is going to throw what you probably, they're going to show the deep skinny post from the number one receiver up top. And if that guy, knowing that he's only got one threat to his third, this corner will latch onto it. And when this safety sees it, they're basically going to bracket the deep post route. What Carolina is now going to do as a result of that, with this guy running this post and occupying safety and corner, this guy's coming down to take the flare route. They are now going to try and manipulate this guy, who is now what we call a flat defender. And what they're doing with this flat defender is they're going to get somebody out in the flat that forces him to come down. They've now occupied him and they've occupied him and they're gonna create what you call a high low on the flat defender with what you call the cross country route where this guy's gonna go under one and then he's gonna run well, he goes across the country, across the formation, and the first one, either the back or the tight end or whoever, Phil Longo is going to send out to the flat and essentially this force this guy to come up and cover that and not feel this deep crosser coming in behind him. So the only way that they can cover this deep crosser is if this safety right here feels it, but he's feeling the deep post or this flat defender coming down not too fast to set the run and him getting depth, then the ball would go there. So essentially the quarterback's read on this particular look would be one to the post and then the high low two to whichever guy comes out in the flat. So he's checking the post first. This is really terrific execution. Carolina hit this route twice, manipulate the cover three, 
this guy doesn't do that poor of a job, honestly. So I rewinded this a little bit. We'll watch it in real time. This flat defender doesn't do a terrible job, but you can see they've actually flooded the flat with two guys here. But I mean, this guy's just gonna keep getting depth. You can see that corner sinking. This safety is rotated to the middle of the field. There's just so much space there. It's a big time throw. Actually not defended terribly by weight on that particular look. So that would be one thing we talked about a really nice execution of the cross country route. The other one, I actually got a question on this, the sack, the game winning sack. So Wake Forest, I actually want to get on the notepad right here and do this for you guys. What Wake Forest is in this one formation that has given Carolina a ton of trouble the entire game. So this is the football. They were putting a trip set to the boundary and they were in what they call a tight bunch with one single receiver to the field. And twice in this particular play, one of these guys came down the scene and got matched up with Jeremiah Gimmel forced to cover them on a uh, basically what they call a trap coverage where he was forced to carry the seam. Well, in this particular look, Carolina gets in what you call a split or an even front where they put two defensive linemen shaded outside of the guard, two defensive ends, the rush or, or whatever Coach Bateman wants to call it. Okay, and for purposes of, let's go ahead and put the back back here. For purposes of the, the defense right here, I'm actually gonna put the two linebackers and how this was done in different colors. They walked up Jeremiah Gimmel into the split six, but they shaded him into the front side a gap, the, the field side a gap. All right. And then they had Chaz Seraph uh, stacked in behind him. Now Seraph was actually man on the back. And what he's taught right here is he is an ad blitzer, meaning if that back stays in the protection, he should add to the blitz. Well, what has to happen? in this particular look with Wake's communication, because they walked to Gimmel up into this strong side A gap, this is really good coaching and a nice scheme by Bateman, is Wake now has to occupy, you're gonna have, you got five offensive linemen, they're gonna be responsible for the four down linemen plus whoever they declare the most dangerous fifth linebacker. You used to hear Peyton Manning, hey, Mike's 45, Mike's 44. Well, right here, the offensive line would be responsible for the four down linemen. Now, uh, the four down linemen plus whoever they consider to be the fifth most dangerous rusher, which in this case was obviously going to be Gimmel. Well, in this particular protection, they're in a six man protection. They would have to slide to the side where they're most threatened. So this would become the slide side or the zone side and this on the back side would become the man side, okay? Which means they're gonna be occupied one, they're gonna be occupied two, and then these three guys will sort out the mic, the tackle, and the rush, however they sort up. So he's got the A gap, he's got the B gap, he's got the C gap, okay? So if he was to spike inside and that guy was to go there, they would just sort them out. So you had man, some people refer to this as man, fan, man, zone, whatever. So you're in a combo coverage. Well, you're still in a six man protection. The sixth man comes from this tailback. I don't care if he's set here or set here. If they go, they might be saying Ringo, 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 which means line slide right, back's got the sixth rusher coming from the left or whoever comes. So it could be a secondary guy. It could be another second level linebacker right here. Well, he knows that he's now got to step up to the left and take Surratt, which that's the matchup you want. You want your best player on a running back or a tight end or whatever, or it could be a corner fire. It could be an overload. It doesn't matter. It's go, it, it will be one of anyone other than the four down lineman plus the Mike, who they declare the Mike. So Gimmel actually goes in the A gap. They get exactly what they want here. The center ends up turning. Now, the one thing that I really did like on this, they're actually in what you call a sim pressure, 
where they drop this in, okay, and then this tackle, essentially, because this guard thought he had him because it was on the man's side, he would then punch and loop, and essentially they ended up wasting this guard because instead of that guard being able to pass him off to this tackle and come back on Surratt and give him a little bit of help, he doesn't get back on time, and Chaz gets the one-on-one -on -one right here with the back and gets the sack. When you look at this particular look, um, let's go back to the home screen, go back to input of how this thing worked out. So you can see here's the split front. So two, three techniques, okay? Two walked up outside linebackers, Russians, whatever you want to call it, Gimel lined up right here in the strong side A gap. So they're forcing away again to slide in the center of the right side of the line this way to take care of these three guys. This back knows that he's got Surratt or anything else that comes off of this weeks, this man side of the protection edge. And you'll see the twist as it works itself out. It's not really a twist. Carolina will drop this rush in. You see how this guard set on that three technique. So he thinks he's got him. By the time he realizes he's going out over the top, Chaz is now guaranteed to get the one-on-one. -on -one. You can see that the guard is late coming back to him. Annie would have had the back on him one-on-one. -on -one. Essentially, you wasted the guard, and it's just a player making a really good play uh, to essentially end the football game. I know Wake got another crack at it, but you can. See it's a really good picture right here. This guard is the one that you're trying to waste. Okay, this guy drops, he ends up taking out over the top. This guy's going to be late to the party. These three got these three. You've really got two unblocked, you got two unoccupied guys that could have got him. But because of the twist stunt on the back side of this, and I'd be on, I'd be lying, guys, that it's really not, that's just a heck of a play by that kid to make that play over the top. So nice scheming on both of those. Uh, instances that we saw today. Hope you learned something about the cross country route and uh, one of the great pressures that Coach Bateman implements on a uh, week to week basis to try and get his best player matched up with a back.